Did you know that subscribing to a mailing list could get you and your business featured in a book? Well, hold that thought as we'll discuss it toward the end, because it relates to today's episode where we're going to talk about how you can build incredible value into your mailing list in order to get more subscribers. And importantly, not just to get them, but to keep them as well. This is about long-term value and long-term success. Of course, the goal of doing so is to build your business, but you need to set aside any tendency to think of people as dollars. They are people making a decision about offering up their valuable attention. So your number one job is offering something they really don't want to miss. This is the Heart Body Business Podcast. Inspiration, tips, and tools for entrepreneurs seeking a more fulfilling type of success. One that stems from exploring and expressing their true passion and purpose and finding healthy ways to do so. All coupled with insights and action items to get a business moving in the right direction. I'm Steve, your host, and I invite you to learn more at heartbodybusiness.com. So today, our goal is to get really practical about getting more subscribers for your mailing list. And the key here is not thinking about the value of a big list for you, but the value of what your list offers to them. Now, there are definitely ways of getting more people to see your offer and different ways of presenting your offer. For instance, you need to make sure your subscription form is visible or easily found by those who want to join. You can use a pop-up subscription box or at least test one. You can have a video explaining what your list offers them rather than just something written and so on. Also, when you're encouraging someone to sign up for your list, make sure you set the right expectations. For instance, how often they should expect to hear from you and what type of content you'll be sending. If you build a mailing list, but don't send an email for six months, people will forget who you are and mark you as spam. Or if you send content they never wanted, they'll mark you as spam. And if you get a bunch of people doing this, your delivery rates will go down and you could even lose access to your mailing service as they don't wanna hurt their own reputation and ability to deliver emails. But today we're going to focus on the value you're promising people to join your mailing list and the value you're committed to upholding, because if you don't, you'll lose trust and lose subscribers. Okay, so how do we create value in our lists to get more subscribers? Let's start with a few really common options, and then we'll get more creative. Discount coupons. If you're focused on e-commerce and they found your site because they were actively looking for something you carry, this may be all you need, especially if it's a commodity and you're trying to win the sale from your competitors. But if you're in the retail business selling commodities, you have to be careful that you're not just competing on price, where there's almost no loyalty. Consider the overall user experience, customer service, handwritten notes on packing slips, other surprises included in a shipment. If you have the right kind of business, you may relate to your customers as an individual and build a sort of friendship or following, which is far more loyal. And your newsletter gives them content from you, which packs in more value than just coupons. On the topic of coupons, there are, of course, services that can add things like a wheel of fortune to your website or some other gimmick to make the coupon process more fun. But at the end of the day, these all just fall into that category. We then have lead magnets. A lead magnet is anything you give away to those who sign up for your mailing list. It doesn't have to be just digital, but a digital lead magnet is easily scaled and costs you nothing. So it's attractive from a business perspective. This might include eBooks, white papers, checklists, recipes, and maybe even results of something like a personality assessment. So here, the question is how much value you pack into that content. Are you solving a problem by teaching something important to your audience? 
Are you making sure it gives real value no matter what they do with you going forward? Are you also making sure it shows how your business can further enhance what they're looking for? If so, this is a win-win. They get something out of it no matter what, but you've also educated them on the value of looking further into your business. In short, you're building authority and trust by helping them out and showing your knowledge. And again, if applicable, you could use this to show your personality as well. Show your humanity, your humor, your unique point of view. This helps you to connect with them even before they start receiving your newsletter. By the way, again, if it's applicable, if there's real value in what you're offering them, you could also sell it on your website for those who don't join your mailing list. This way, you're able to show subscribers that they've received a genuine monetary value for signing up. You could use less common digital lead magnets. Maybe give access to an exclusive file, like a song or lecture or video. Maybe access to a software tool. Maybe a pre-formatted spreadsheet that helps to simplify some business process that your customers engage in. In short, something that makes their life easier. Of course, as I said, lead magnets don't have to be digital. They could be something that actually has to be sent in the mail. Now, you could tie this to an initial purchase as well. Choose from these three products to be included with your membership or first order. But that's about getting someone to spend. And here we're focused on building a mailing list rather than asking someone to pull out their wallet right away. So you could opt to send something physical. There are plenty of things with perceived value that cost next to nothing when you order from overseas. So you could order something in bulk to make this affordable. Of course, this is harder to scale unless you hire a service to fulfill these orders for you. There are ways to connect subscriber notifications to warehouses to handle this. But if you're going to include something physical, you might consider making it something tightly related to your business. Maybe it's a book about your business, or maybe it's something you have produced, something that they can only get from you. In short, you're sending a sample so that they know whether they want to buy more in the future. Software companies can do this easily, giving digital access for a trial period. It's a little harder if you have physical products but can still be worthwhile as an exchange for someone's email address and future attention. A variation on this idea of giving something to everyone who joins your mailing list, and one that doesn't require mailing something to everyone, you can offer a contest or giveaway of something more valuable, but only to one new subscriber each month. If you have enough traffic to your mailing list landing page each month, you may be able to justify something worth hundreds of dollars or more, making it really compelling for people to sign up with a bit of a lottery mentality. Now, there are laws around this sort of thing, so I recommend using software to automate the process of gathering emails and choosing someone in compliance with these laws. Many of these will help the campaign go viral, by giving people more entries for sharing a link to your list through social media, email, etc. So we've covered a lot of different lead magnet ideas, that is one-time benefits for joining your list. But now let's talk about going beyond lead magnets and let's start with giving them your time. You can get people signing up for a live webinar where you go beyond canned material and include a live Q&A to individually help them out, although in a group setting. And if your business model allows it, if a qualified lead is really valuable to you, then you can vet people in the mailing list process and for the right prospects, offer them something like a 15-minute consultation to answer their individual questions about some topic you're an expert on. You're using this as an opportunity to qualify yourself to them and them to you. You're showing your expertise and giving real value, again, whether or not they continue working with you. 
And in doing so, you build trust and rapport and the opportunity to take it to the next level. You also find if they'll be a good fit for you or if they'll be more trouble than they're worth. Maybe you find them to have the wrong energy, to not value your time, and so on. And by the way, this doesn't necessarily have to be your time if you have trained staff that can handle these calls for you, whatever works for your business. So now we've looked at lead magnets, and we've looked at even offering your time to new subscribers, but there's an important similarity to all of these approaches. They are effectively one and done. Granted, maybe you're regularly offering coupons, so that might be an exception, but a lot of these offers give someone value when they join, but they do nothing to encourage someone to stick around on your mailing list. I did talk about getting personal, if appropriate, building a friendship, a relationship, and becoming someone that people enjoy hearing from. They want your insights, your humor, and even your product recommendations. On the topic of health, Dr. Keith Scott Mumby is a good example of this for me. I don't read every email he sends, but I've been on his list for years. He is a substantial expert in the space, has a great sense of humor, and introduces me to ideas and products I want to know more about. So this is one meaningful way to keep subscribers. But there are other ways to keep up with the value. One way is to keep offering valuable content, of course. New recipes, new tips, beta access to software features, etc. Another option, rather than just a contest for new subscribers, may be a monthly contest for all subscribers. This is something I do on my mailing list for a couple of reasons. First, I use this as a way to share my wins and misses on my personal goals each month, and I put value into my giveaways based on the misses to hold myself accountable to my goals. Not only am I holding myself accountable, but I hope to inspire my followers to track their own goals and hold themselves accountable to get people taking action to keep making progress. This podcast is about carrying all of us toward success. Another benefit to this is that my contests require people to take an action to win, which means they need to read the newsletter. So this helps with engagement and, I hope, builds community. A third option. Maybe your business also builds community through something like events. What about discounting tickets to those who have been on your list for at least one year, encouraging people to stick around? What if you discounted it by their email open rate, literally offering free tickets to those who open 100% of your emails, discounting 50% for those who open 50% of your emails, and so on? I'm not sure of a good way to automate this, but it could be worth doing this manually for high-ticket events. A fourth option, maybe you've noticed the last two ideas included the word community. And that's really what I'm going for here. Community is something that encourages people to stick around. Can you give subscribers access to a literal online community like a message board or private social group? If appropriate, what about featuring one subscriber each month so they have a chance to have their business recognized and even earn a link to their business, which may be valuable for search engine optimization purposes? More importantly, if you have a large list, that's a lot of exposure for them to the rest of the community and could help them to build their business. You could give them an opportunity to request that you cover certain topics. You could give them other opportunities that are unique to your business and what you offer to them. In short, there are a lot of ways to create ongoing value and even loyalty so that you're not just playing a new subscriber's numbers game, but are building a long-term business. And on that note, I said that subscribing to an email list could get you and your business featured in a book. So let's get into that. My exact goal 
with the Heart Body Business Podcast is to build a community of entrepreneurs who I can give more and more value to rather than basing my success on some metric like listeners. I want to see personal transformation happening and people getting healthier and happier, and businesses growing as a result of not only what I share, but what we can do as a group. So I'm taking this long-term value approach to my own mailing list, and here's just a few examples. As I said, I'm doing monthly contests, and values of what I do for the community will grow as the community grows. And these prizes, of course, will always be about helping with personal development health, and business growth. As we build the group, I'll take regular inspiration from subscribers about what to cover in the podcast, opening the chance to support members where they're looking for support. Eventually, I'd like to add interviews into the podcast. Besides bringing in outside guests, my plan is to sometimes interview subscribers specifically to give them more visibility and hopefully to help their businesses grow. And in a similar way, I'm thinking about a book project for 2024. I have a very specific plan for how this book will go, and I expect it to be jammed with tips for personal growth, health, and business from loads of experts and from subscribers. Again, all for exposure with links to the businesses of each contributor. This is just a sample of what I have planned if I can build up the group. So as you can imagine, I'm encouraging you to subscribe at heartbodybusiness.com. Yes, building a list helps me to build a more successful podcast. But I hope you understand the theme here. I'm looking out for your success in order to find my own in this project. And in the same way, if you're looking to build long-term value in a mailing list for your business, I encourage you to think in that way. How can you help all of your subscribers to win? And in doing so, can you see how this would build your business and your success? The world, I believe, needs more people thinking in terms of winning by helping others win. The idea that a rising tide lifts all boats, that you don't need someone else to lose for you to win, and that this can be the spirit that grows your mailing list more quickly and for the long-term growth you really want to see. Till next time, thanks for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe. You can also join our mailing list to get alerts on our latest episodes and other tips, tools, and news. Learn more and sign up at heartbodybusiness.com.